Ladies and gentlemen, today is November 3rd, 2015, and this is The Can Kale Show, episode 268, where we learn to be better artists. I'm your host, Ken Lafferty, and today we are going to be sketch lifting. We're going to be working our biceps and our triceps and our latissimus dorsi, most importantly, and our stylus weaving muscles. And I'm going to teach you guys how to sketch lift, and you might be asking, what the heck is sketch lifting? Well... We're gonna be jumping back into Violet, right? We're jumping back into Violet, and a lot of you guys have been asking how I do kind of my, like my stylistic approach, or like with coloring, how I go about doing this. And, and today what we're focusing on is black and white sketches, and then preparing those for color, right? So just as a quick example, or before we get into that, we, we need to do something even more important. Which is, of course, go down a stroll down the lovely lane, or rather, up the lovely lane. It just trickles down like a, like a waterfall. It's a waterfall of amazing talent sent in by you guys at the Kane Kale Fan Art. If you want to go check this out for yourself, just type in that tiny URL, Kane Kale Fan Art. Like the show, or like the page, submit your art, get featured on the show. And there is a ton of stuff here. There are thousands of pieces for you guys to go take a look at. Once again, thank you so much to everyone who has participated and done this. We've got to scroll a little bit faster because... We are on break. That's what happens when you're on break for a week. A week, you guys just blow up the entire Facebook. Okay, but anyway, let's get back to this. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. Let's get back to this. Okay, so uh, for those of you who tuned in last week, we were working with Violet, which is one of my own original characters. Super cool, huh? And what we're going to be doing today is talking about preparing stuff for line art. Okay, so this is probably the most common thing that you've seen people do. They'll do something like, hey, well, I know about multiply. I know about multiply, so let's just set this to multiply. And then let's start painting. Let's say she has like a pink suit. And then you start painting colors behind her, right? This type of stuff. But then the problem arises when you want to start painting like, like the, the lines are black, right? The lines are black. And this character is just like, you wanna go back in there and you wanna color the lines. So you're like, oh, okay, well maybe I can like make a, a, a lighten layer, right? So let's do like a lighten layer on these lines and like maybe clip it back. I don't know exactly if this will work, but is it working? Oh, it is actually, wow, how about that? A lighten layer, right? And then you can like lighten the lines to kind of color them, right? But see what the problem is, is that you, it only works up to a certain degree. And then you get stuff like this. And this is your arch nemesis. In fact, probably some of you didn't even know how to do that, right? Lighten on top of a multiply, right? It's just, there's too many things going on. There's too many factors and I just don't like it. So today what we're gonna be focusing on is a way to simplify this stuff. And by the way, that gray, that gray crap that I was talking about, see this nasty color like that goes in through here, like this, like all these gray little bits. That whole lighten trick only works so much. So today I'm going to be teaching you sketch lifting and it's probably the most important tutorial that I'm ever going to teach you because not only am I teaching it today, but I have been learning it. I tried it out a couple times and I was like, ooh, it's like, it feels so like naughty. Like you shouldn't be able to do that. It's too easy, it's too easy, but I'm gonna teach you today. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you any further. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is uh, let's take a step back to something that I talked about last week, last week. And that was that normally what I like to do is I'll prepare my sketches, right? I told you guys all about this. I'd like you to just forget, forget about it right now. But like, let's say you're drawing a face, right? And you do like one of these things, you got a happy face. And then say you wanna add in some values to that. I said to do your values by pressing lightly, right? You're never changing your color over here you keep that color and in order to put a darker value down, you just press lightly with your stylus, press lightly. So basically the difference between pressing hard like that and then pressing light, you create that. And then that naturally allows you to place colors behind it because now you're working with opacity, right? But the thing that I found out is that that's just kind of too big of a pain in the butt. And like, it's hard, it's more of a pain in the neck than it is actually going to be worth and it takes a lot of practice. And even now that I'm doing it this way, I would, I would rather just do it this way. Okay, so the good news is, is that if you painted a picture all black and white and it's like you were actually painting whites like I told you not to, right? You were like painting the whites in there, like selecting this color and painting it in rather than erasing, which is what I told you to do. That was the other thing. If you were erasing to create your whites, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter how you get to it. 
Point is, is that you want to just get to a black and white state like this, okay? Ideally, you want to have the lightest parts of your painting pretty dang close to white, if not straight white. And then your darkest parts of your painting, you want to have some values in there that are getting close to black, okay? So let's go ahead and move into it. So, oh, and the way that you can do this is you can go into your adjustments, right? I go to image adjustments, brightness, contrast. Say you want to kind of kick up the contrast between your blacks and whites. Uh, I like to hit use legacy, right? Because they had it right before. I don't know why they changed this, but make sure you click that if you're running the newer versions of Adobe Photoshop. And uh, what you can do is then you can tweak the brightness and the contrast. See how that kicks up the, the contrast between the lights and darks. You wanna find that nice happy medium where you're not losing too much of your grays, but you're pushing the differences between the blacks and whites, okay? So I got to right about there. Actually, we could probably change it a little bit. Whoops. Wrong thing, you probably use levels too, but I like to use legacy just because I'm lazy and I like two sliders. I like two sliders. I don't like graphs. I don't like little bendy lines, weird things. You gotta customize all that crap. I just like two simple sliders. Okay, so let's go with that. Okay, so just before we move on, just so you know, I'm gonna show you that this is all in one layer. Not only can you see it down below, but if I turn down the lightness, see how it darkens the entire piece? That's, well, there's some things in there that's where I erase, but that's okay. That's that's totally fine. You can have this all on one layer. Point is, you just want to have black and white. Okay, and say you did it on a bunch of multiple layers. Here's where we're going to go ahead and fix that right now. So, what you're going to do is you're going to hit Shift Control, Shift Control, and Alt, and then E. Okay, Shift Control, Alt, E. That's all three of those magical keys. And what that does is it stamps your picture, right? Or it flattens it and it creates it on a new layer. So if you look before, it was just layer one. Now we have layer five, okay? And that basically makes it so that we have one clean layer with uh, our drawing on it. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to hit uh, control I and then do not be afraid. I know that Halloween just passed, but it's going to scare you what's gonna happen to your piece, right? It's gonna, oh, turn it into a scary, ghost looking creature. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and hit control A next. Control A as an apple. Control C, which is control copy, of course, you know that. And then we're gonna move over to a special little tab. This magical little tab down here next to your layers. Next to your layers, see right here you got layers and then you got channels. And you're like, what is channels? Well, we're actually gonna use that today. And if you don't have that tab, don't worry. You can just go to window and then just uh, click channels and it'll show up, okay? So look at this, you got RGB, red, green, blue. See, that's all well and good, but we need another type of thing. We need another type of layer in here. So hey, much like you would create a new layer for your layers, there's this button down here, which will create a new channel. A new channel, which is your alpha channel. And now, remember how we copied that black, that X-ray vision version of our character? You can go ahead and hit Control V. And what that is going to do, it's going to place that alpha it places that alpha into your piece, okay? Now, if you go back to your, uh, oh, and before you move back into your thing, make sure you turn these off, or turn your RGBs back on and then turn that alpha off, okay? Because if you don't, then basically this is what happens. Like you turn on that alpha and it'll just, it'll still look like that even when you go back to your layers, okay? So make sure you turn that alpha off because you don't need it. Turn all the other layers on, turn off that alpha, okay? So now, uh, turn off that alpha. This is like really, <laughs> you're probably gonna have to watch this a couple of times. But anyway, that alpha is done. Like that, that black and white, we're back in layers now. Back over to layers, switching back to layers. We don't need this anymore. We can go ahead and delete this. Go ahead and delete it. We just needed that black and white x-ray version to create the alpha. But here's what you're gonna do now. So check this out. You're gonna go to select, select, then you're going to do load selection, load selection, there you go. Now check this out, we got document, material girl, that's the name of our PSD. And then you're gonna see channel, huh, isn't that interesting? We just came back from the channels. So what you wanna do is you click down and then you'll see this alpha one, click that right there. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to load a selection, selecting everything from that alpha, okay? So hit okay. And then there's gonna be all these marching ants all over your piece, right? It's gonna look crazy, it's gonna look kind of crappy. But now what I want you to do is select a color. Select a strange color, like maybe just kind of like this purple, just so you know that this works, okay? 
Now, the last step, okay, I, I promise I would hold your hand, right? I would hold your hand and I would not lead you astray. Create a new layer, shift control N, which is the shortcut, lots of shortcuts today. New layer, go ahead and turn off that layer, turn off the layer behind it. And now what I want you to do is hit control or fill, right? So go to edit fill. I have mine hotkeyed, but the shortcut is shift F5 or you can do edit fill. Now watch what happens. Uh, fill with that foreground color, which is our purple. And look at that. We now have, oh my gosh, an alpha version of our piece, ready to be colored, ready. Our lines can now be colored. Now here, let me just prove this to you. Let me prove this to you. Check this out. So let's go ahead and darken this down a little bit. And let's go ahead and change the background color. Now this is what I'm talking about. So say you wanna change that background color to like this orange, okay? So let's go ahead and fill the background with that. See what we did there? Now, basically what we just did is we lifted the, the black lines, the sketch out of the whites, right? We turned the whites into transparencies. We can now see through it. And now we can continue with my technique, the one where the animation cell technique, where we put the lines in front, colors behind it, colors behind it, and then we go back over and overpaint. But this allows us to do that because look, if we just put this up, right, this is on multiply, right? But like as a normal, that's the most important thing is that you want this to be on normal when you're gonna start painting, okay? So normals like that, multiplies like that, we already discussed, because this is what usually happens. This is what people usually do. It's like, I need this picture to be transparent, but then they put it to multiply, and then we already went over all the problems that happened with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Now we have our beautiful, our, I just, I, I love this. Every time this happens, I'm just like, oh, it's so nice, such a huge relief. And I'm so happy that I learned this from an awesome YouTube video. And um, I mean, but it was just like really kind of, like it was just like one of those things with like the annotations at the bottom. And I was like, man, like I need to try this because too often I was relying on, oh, this would be a good way to explain it right here. So too often I was relying on drawing a face like this, right? And then if I wanted to put any values into it, you know, I kind of do this thing where I press lightly with the, the brush like that. But then like say I wanted to add some highlights into that hair. I'd have to go in and I would erase, I would erase it away rather than painting white back into it, rather than painting a, or a lighter color back into it. And that was just kind of a pain in the butt because the problem is, is that once you start getting a ton of like little details and little tiny things, like you go to refine one thing and then it like messes up everything else. You know, it's like you get like one shot to get your values right. And that just didn't cut it for me. It didn't cut it for me because not only did it, there need to be an easier way, this looks like a lemming by the way, do they have noses? No, they don't, I don't even think they have noses. This is a lemming. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, it just wasn't cutting it for me. So this is a way to lift your sketches away from your background. And now let me show you one more thing, one more thing to totally blow your mind before you go. I'm gonna show you how to quickly mask your characters. Because that's another thing that I see people constantly doing wrong. Constantly doing wrong. Just go back before I did this because there is a bit more of an alpha. You notice when I deleted that, see how it's still just a little bit lighter there? That's because before I did the alpha, the background was not completely white. So there still is just a little bit of that color mixed into there. So um, ideally, if you want to do it right, uh, or if you don't want that to happen, then just go ahead and make sure that before you do the alpha, a good way to test it is to just eye drop it. See how it's close to white, but it's not all the way there. It's literally just like a couple pixels off. But anyway, let me show you how to quickly mask, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and kick this background back to white. And let's talk about masking. Let's talk about quick masking. Okay, so the number one priority, the number one priority behind this is that your edges, your edges must be clean. Clean edges, none of this. See see all this crap in here? You can't have that, otherwise your mask is gonna look like crap, you don't want that. So go in there, get in there, and begin refining your edges, okay? Refine them edges. There we go. Let's go ahead and refine those edges like that. 
This is just a basic, I'm just gonna show you the basics of it because most of these edges are pretty refined. They don't have to be like perfect. Sometimes I like to actually just grab my ink brush like this, set that as my eraser, and then I'll zoom in really closely. This is like for all of you OCD people out there like me, you want your edges like really, really clean. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that. And see how we're kind of getting that weird thing like on the edge here? Another thing that you could do to get rid of that, like see how it's just slightly purple there? Once you go in to mask it, you could theoretically like select everything around it and delete it. So you, now we have like a brighter background. So you could do that too to get rid of it if you didn't get the whole alpha thing right or whatever. But anyway, so now that we, let's just say for the sake of argument that all of these edges are perfectly clean, okay? So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna grab your magical wand. I like to set my tolerance, right? My tolerance on my magical fairy wand to about 50, right? About 50, it will do just fine. Then you're gonna select everything around the character. Actually, this is probably gonna be a bit of a pain in the butt because that is not clearly defined. But regardless, let's just continue, right? Let's select everything around the character for the most part. Just all the white spaces, right? There's gonna be a little bit of uh, weirdness in there, but that's okay. So I selected everything around the character, right? Go to select. I'm teaching you a lot about tools today. You should be very happy with this. Expand, and then I like to expand about like two pixels, two pixels. Now you'll notice what that did is take a look at the marching ants. Let's zoom in really close. So you see them there? Basically they were there and then you expand it and it pushes it a little bit further into your lines. It pushes that, um, that selection just slightly more into your character. And this can help you avoid like, have you ever tried to like use the magic wand to like color stuff and then you notice there's like this weird kind of thing along the edges of your line art? This will help avoid that. You wanna, you wanna expand it so that way it goes into your character ever so slightly so you don't have that weird like little pixelated effect that only happens to show up like when you're at certain uh, zoom levels. Like it shows up at like 33%, but then at 25% it's not there anymore and it's really confusing. Okay, but anyway. So the next thing we're gonna do is shift control I, which is going to invert your selection, or you can do select and uh, inverse, select inverse. That's going to implode your selection. And then we're gonna choose, my friends, a mask color. Now I like to choose something that's fairly light, something kind of like this. And then make sure that you, you have your layer down here, right? Your line layer. Create another one behind it, and then you're gonna fill it. And then look at that. Look at that, you got an instant character mask. It's so easy. It's so easy, it just, like everything that I just showed you today, it, it makes me kind of feel bad because it's so dang easy. And it makes it so that way you're able to have a clean line art. It's, you're able to have a clean thing ready to go for your character. You can begin, you can have your basic mask ready to go. And then the most important part is, which we're gonna be going into next week with line coloring and masking, your lines are set up from, let's not forget where we came from, from this black and white piece we created line art or lines that are ready to be colored in the final stage and they're set to normal set to normal can you see that i really hope you can right there normal this is not on multiply that's the most important part and the reason why i taught you everything i have taught you today because eventually i'm going to give you a little sneak peek of what we're going to be doing we're going to be coloring the lines coloring the lines and obviously this is not going to be a purple character but this is going to give us the freedom to be able to color our lines. And that is going to help us avoid a lot of the common problems that happen when you try to set your lines to overlay or multiply. It takes all that guesswork out and it basically will allow you to say, okay, the color that I choose is the color that I'm going to get, right? Like I chose this red and I get that red. It's not like the red mixed with the purple. I choose this green and I get that green. And that's gonna be very important going into the next week. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So I know that I probably just blew your minds and loaded you up with a ton of stuff, but don't worry that if you missed out on any of those instructions, just feel free to watch the video over and over again. Um, and just take it slow. Take it slow going through. There's a lot like with the channels, the alpha and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll continue with this piece next week. And I'll be teaching you guys the next part of this cool um, technique. I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm really happy that you guys can now fully paint in black and white as much as you please. You don't have to worry about doing like the, the drawing and then erasing thing. It's just, it's too much, okay? It's too much. It was, it was enough for me 
It was enough for me, but even that, I got fed up with that. So now I'm doing it this way from now on. So I hope this helps you guys out. I'm so happy that you guys joined me on YouTube. Before we go, I do need to say thank you to my awesome sponsors, and I'm gonna talk really loud because this music is loud on purpose. Nonplus, David Cariello, and Laura Bashir. Thank you for sponsoring the show. You guys are amazing. These are my sponsors, by the way, on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, if you want to take a look at this PSD for yourself, I'll be uploading it to Patreon, and you can click that link at the top of the video to go check it out for yourself. And you can see this. Uh, I will have like this, uh, these lines here, the mask, and the old version there, as well as the channels, right? You can go in and check out that alpha. You can do the whole thing, follow along with the video, and you guys will become masters. And make sure that you, um, with great power comes great responsibility. This is a big thing. It's probably one of the like most important tutorials, probably the most life-changing tutorials or techniques that I've ever really happened upon and taught to you guys. So I hope that you use it wisely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that, we're gonna call it good. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week for another show. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.